Well, I'd like to uh, welcome everyone this morning. Uh, we have uh, just a couple of items uh, to cover and uh, uh, appreciate everyone uh, being here. Um, first, I uh, want to start with uh, an announcement from the Lima Police Department. Major Baker is here uh, to um, uh, lay out for the community very publicly a set of, uh, of schedules for some special enforcement activities uh, and uh, that we want the public to be very aware of. Yes, so, absolutely. That's, that's the whole point. No surprises. We want to let people know. Good morning. Uh, the Lyon Police Department has received two federal safety traffic grants uh, or, well, from the uh, Ohio Department of uh, Public Safety, from the State Highway Patrol, and from the Ohio Traffic Safety. It's for the 2015 physical, federal physical year, which actually began back in October. These grants, as the mayor has said, one of the portions, it, it focuses on uh, education and announcement. Um, we want people to know. We want people to drive safely. We want to reduce crashes. We want to reduce fatalities. And that's part of this. The other part of it is the high visibility, uh, getting people out there. There's two grants. The first grant is the Selective Traffic Enforcement Program, which is called STEP. We received $16,523 for that. Um, a lot of that, again, is high visibility. We're going to be focusing on um, things that uh, cause a lot of crashes, uh, occupant restraints, speed, distracted drivers, aggressive drivers, that type of thing. And the second grant is the uh, IDEP grant, which is the um, impaired uh, driver grant. And that focuses on, obviously, people that are impaired in their driving. We received uh, $24,000 for that one. With these, uh, again, as a part of the um, high visibility, there are certain um, campaigns or blitzes, if you will, that we will be a part of and letting the community know about. Um, just to name a few, homecoming, which has been going on right now, Halloween coming up, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Super Bowl, uh, Click It or Ticket, if you're familiar with that campaign, Drive Sober, Get Pulled Over, um, all of these things are a part of that. Um, we threw some dollar numbers out there, but what this equates to is, it provides us with 700 man hours to try to reduce uh, these crashes, the uh, injuries, and the fatalities. So we're very grateful to be receiving that. Thank you. Okay. And uh, do we start sometime soon? Uh, we are starting real soon. Yep, exactly. We're yep. starting real soon. <laughs> yes, this, this is it right here. So we're getting started now. <laughs> All right, very good. And Rick Stolle from Parks Department. Uh, concerning trick-or-treat. Everybody got their costume? You all right, Stacy? I'm, I'm okay. I see uh, Major Cortez is going to go as a detective again this year. <laughs> That's nice. Uh, trick-or-treat, the announcement. Um, the, uh, as many of you know, we, we went together about five or six years ago to try to get everyone, the city and surrounding townships, on the same page so that we were doing trick-or-treat on the same evening. Um, <clears throat> that that agreed-upon date is the last Thursday of the month of October. And that translates to October 30th of this month, um, and our time is 6 to 8 p.m. So uh, a couple things to remember. We always try to remember <clears throat> remind our citizens of, if you're participating in the event, uh, we in, in, you know invite you to turn your porch light on, so that uh, the kids and parents know that uh, you are participating. Um, second, uh, again, motorists, please be careful as you traverse through the neighborhoods of that evening. Uh, if at all possible, try to maneuver about the community sometime outside of that time frame uh, to keep things safe. Kids are running from house to house. They've got masks on in most cases, and they're not paying attention. They're really not looking for you. Uh, if you are out, please look for them. That's very, very important. Uh, uh, it is. It will be turning dark during that uh, that time frame. So again, please, you know, pay attention to that. And then, third reminder is to, to parents: uh, please have the kids supervised as best you can. Uh, we see an awful lot of parents that are walking with kids, and we think that's terrific. It not only gives you an idea of where the kids are going, but it also helps that extra set of eyes and, and ears for the kids as they cross the street. So those are, those are the items that we really want people to pay attention to. Again, October 30th, Thursday evening, October 30th from 6 to 8. Uh, 
here in the city of Lima. Okay? Very good. Thank you. There, uh, I, I got two phone calls yesterday, uh, nasty phone calls, uh, people hearing that we had um, scheduled this for Monday. Um, I don't know where they got that information. Uh, it's not true, and we want to make sure that everybody understands what that there is a formula for the for making the date, which is the last Thursday of of uh, the month of October, and that uh, this time it follow falls on October 30th. So, I want to get that word out. Uh, lastly, this morning, uh, City Auditor Randy Bartels is here uh, as. Uh, uh, his office is also uh, charged with uh, purchasing functions for the city. Um, he's here with an announcement about the results of natural gas auction, which we just uh, participated in. Thanks, Mayor. On uh, September 30th, last Tuesday, the city participated in a reverse auction for our, the commodity portion of our natural gas bills. Uh, the city has 30 separate gas meters and prior to this auction, we were paying anywhere from $5.45 to $8.99 per million cubic feet of natural gas. The commodity portion of these separate meters uh, were served by individ several individual gas providers, and at times it was as many as 13 individual companies that were providing us the commodity portion of our natural gas. Uh, in many instances, this resulted in multiple invoices for a particular account, so it, it could get confusing. With the reverse auction process, we were able to lock in a price of $4.87 per million cubic feet with Volunteer Energy, which is located in Pickerington, Ohio. And in addition to this price, we were able to arrange for unified billing. What this means is that not only do we have a process now where we only have to pay one invoice per each meter, but we're also going to be saving a minimum of 10.5% on the commodity piece of our natural gas bills. Uh, the price fix is, is good for three-year period. However, we have a clause in the contract that allows us to take advantage of any future decreases in natural gas prices if they occur. Delivery will still be provided by Dominion East Ohio Gas, and the contract takes effect on November 1st. And I would also like to give uh, recognition to Mr. Dale Seibert, with the city's utilities department. He was the city's point person on this project and without his efforts to organize all of our information, it wouldn't have gone nearly as smoothly as it did. You want to describe how the reverse auction happens because it's pretty fascinating. It, it, it is, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm an accountant, so I'm a numbers guy and I get excited with those things. But uh, it, we, we, we gather in a room, in a conference room, and this is all done over the internet. Uh, we use a, a facilitator, a company name of MX, E-M-E-X, and they pull together the various providers of these commodities. Um, and they, they, all these providers know what our meter count is, what our usage is, uh, what our historical costs have been. Uh, they also know, on the other side of that, what the market rates are for natural gas. And they have a five-minute window and they, so we start counting down at five minutes and each of these providers gives us their best price. And within that five minutes, they can change those prices. And we see it on the screen. And we see all this activity on the screen. They see the same thing. The only thing they don't see that we do see are the names of the companies. But they do see these, so company X on their window has changed their price. They have an opportunity to, to change their price. and. Uh, Actually, I think when we started this, au this particular auction, the, the starting price was $5.90 per million cubic feet, and within a matter of 30 seconds, it dropped to below $5, and we, we settled on the 487. So it, it is. It's, it's a lot of fun to watch, and like I said, I'm a numbers guy, so. Well, it's a, a structured way of, of uh, letting the marketplace work. Absolutely, and this, this is not the city's first foray into reverse auctions. Uh, a year ago, we went through the same process for the electricity commodity piece of our electric bills, and we're now realizing savings of upwards of 13% on, on that piece as well. So it, it uh, is very functional and very beneficial. Thank you. 
I should comment that, I mean, there have been all of the, all of us have had vendors, uh, various companies representing natural gas uh, suppliers beating on our doors. And um, the way, by, by going through this reverse uh, auction, um, there's a standardized set of uh, uh, specs. Everybody knows what they're bidding on. We know what they're bidding on. We know the, the common terms. And um, uh, that really helps us get to um, a, uh, a purchasing arrangement that works for them, but also works for us. And we're not, there's no hidden surprises that uh, can come up at the last minute because all that's disclosed up front and the companies have the opportunity to participate or not. And how many bidders did we actually have? We had four bidders on this. Program. Four bidders. And I think we had, we had about eight or ten on the electricity auction. But uh, normally auctions, you think about bidding up, you know, if you're the buyer. But because we're the buyer on this, it, it worked in reverse order and drove it to the lowest possible price that we could get. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, I just also uh, want to comment, uh, finally, um, and commend um, our safety services uh, for the job that um, they did uh, in the last 24 hours and are continuing to, to do on the, the fire at the Otis Wright plant. Um, it was a very dramatic scene uh, and uh, really did require um, the cooperation of many agencies. We appreciate the, the backup that was provided by the townships, but. Uh, also the frontline work that was done by so many individuals and you know thank goodness that uh, not a, not a person was uh, injured uh, on that big of a of a operation anything can happen and we were fortunate we we're also fortunate that the wind uh, didn't uh, play havoc with the scene as well because i think uh, with the school in uh, the vicinity we would have been in the need of having to evacuate and that didn't happen so um, but again uh, hats off to everybody uh, involved on the safety service side i also understand talking to the chief this morning that uh, many many um, local businesses provided food refreshment uh, for uh, everybody that would had that was working throughout the night so that is also appreciated that level of community support i think is uh, is uh, very uh, very much appreciated so that's all that we have for today thank you and we'll break down for interviews